Okay, welcome back to the second half of my two-part uh, video series on the Martini Cadet. Um, today I'm at the range. I've got uh, some loaded up ammunition here. I'm going to get some video footage of uh, shooting at a small four-inch steel target that's out at 80 metres. Um, the reason I've got it at 80 metres, it's not um, anything to do with the uh, capability of the rifle. It's just that um, four inches at 80 metres is about as far as I can see. Uh, to be able to even, you know, um, aim, at, aim at a target that small. Um, and I can consistently hit it at 80 metres with this rifle, so that's why I put it about there. So uh, we're going to go in to get some video footage, and uh, then I'm going to take uh, the expended brass shells home, and uh, we're going to show you how to reload for the um, Martini Cadet or 310 Cadet. S stay with me, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Sometimes I have a problem with seating these projector, uh, these uh, primers into the shells, and uh, they're not seated deep enough when they fire on the second shot. This is consistently hitting that target every time down there. Open my mouth too soon, missed that one. I'm sure, if you can hear it hitting that target down there. That's just me uh, not pushing the primers in hard enough. Well, there you have it. Martini 310 Cadet. Martini actual single shot rifle. Great fun to shoot and accurate too. So the first thing you need to determine with uh, your Martini Cadet rifle is uh, what its bore and groove diameter is. So to do that, you can uh, look online and have a look at different ways to slug the barrel. But um, you see here, I've got a couple of slugs that I've knocked through my barrel. And um, you can see the grooves that are in the uh, slugs there. And you measure those with the calipers and work out what your bore diameter and groove diameter. Now, so for my rifle, I've got a bore diameter of 0.316 of an inch and a groove diameter of 0.321 of an inch. So therefore I need a projectile that's going to be at least 0.321 or if not slightly larger. And you'll see here that I've got a projectile that you can purchase in Australia which is a 128 grain 0.323 projectile. So for me this one works out to be more accurate than this other version which is the 0.316 version. 
So I've got a couple of targets here from my early uh, load development and you can see there that's a very accurate uh, round and that's five grains of powder at 25 meters um, and that was most accurate for my for that 0.323 projectile although uh, the five grains was making uh, some of the cases stick in the chamber and was, some of them were getting a little bit hard to um, extract so I end up dropping this charge down to uh, 4.7 grains anyway, just makes it better. Um, 4.7 grains end up being the accuracy load uh, for the 316 uh, projectile anyway. So I shoot both the same, 4.7 whether it's either 122 or 128 grain, and they're, and they're both accurate. And so let's talk about components that you'll need to reload for the 310 Cadet. So uh, when you uh, get the opportunity to buy a obviously a second-hand um, 310 Cadet. If the sale comes with any of these components with it, uh, snap at that opportunity because um, particularly the dies are a little bit expensive uh, and the brass not so expensive but difficult to come by. So let's start with brass to start with. So there's really only one opportunity for brass in Australia um, and that's through a company called Bertram Bullet Company. Uh, they don't make this brass all year round. They make it in a couple of batches because it's a fairly rare uh, order. But you can order this through your local gun shops and they can have it on back order for you when Bertram um, do a run of that brass through them through their factory. Um, when I got my rifle, I got a, nearly 100 uh, pieces of brass with it and these were all new. And I haven't really gone through any except for a couple I destroyed when I was learning to how to reload for this. Um, but basically I'm still using all the same brass. Okay, next is dies. So this is a set of Lee dies, uh, and you'll notice they've got the uh, Hornady collet adapters on them as well, because I've got a Hornady um, uh, reloading press. Um, but you can get dies either through Simplex, uh, I think RCBS in the United States sell them, but obviously Lee being a United States company, uh, they do sell 310 cadet dies. They're a little bit more expensive than your standard run of the mill lead dies because they're a little bit rarer um, but well worth the effort. I'll go into a couple of um, idiosyncrasies with the lead dies though and I have been told that the other dies if you can get them like simplex etc the older ones uh, are possibly a better um, style die but I don't have any problems reloading with these and I'm quite happy with them. So next on to projectiles. So Obviously you can cast your own uh, bullets if you wish um, and uh, in Australia there's a company called Cast Bullet Engineering who make a number of uh, range of uh, moulds for the 310 Cadet of different weights and different sizes. Uh, so I'll put a link for those in the uh, description below but otherwise if you're looking for um, already pre-manufactured projectiles there's a company called Hawkesbury River Bullet Company. Uh, and they are basically the only producer of the projectiles. This brand here being Black Widow projectiles, they get their uh, projectiles manufactured by Hawkesbury River anyway. So they're basically the same projectiles. Now they offer two different versions. There's these ones called the 122 grain uh, round nose. And these are a 316 straight walled projectile. Whereas the other type that they produce is the 323 uh, or the 323 inch uh, projectile, which is a heel projectile, but funnily enough, the heel is still around about 315 or 314 as well. Okay, so you got two options there. These ones are $71 at the time, these are $70 at the time, so basically the same, but you get 500 projectiles in each, so they'll last you quite a long time. So next is primers. So any small rifle primer will fit in the back of the Bertram case, well any 310 Cadet case. So I'm using CCI Small Rifle Primers number 400. Next is powder. So the type of powder you want to use is a fast burning pistol powder. And this one here is called AP70N, uh, made by ADI Sporting Powders in Australia. And I'll put a link to a uh, website for ADI where they have a table for uh, equivalent powder types. Um, but it's a you know a fairly fast burning pistol powder. So let's go on to some of the uh, tricks that you'll uh, need to overcome with re reloading for the 310 Cadet. So let's look at it at uh, five form brass for starters. 
The brass is a slightly tapered um, cartridge, but you'll notice that the five formed inside diameter of this case is that one's 314 and a half. This one's 313 and a half. 315, sorry. Fifteen, and three fifteen. Okay, so out of my rifle, this brass inside diameter of the case mouth is three fifteen. So regardless of the fact that this three twenty three projectile has a healed face at the uh, piece at the bottom. It's not going to push directly into this projectile without me flaring the uh, into this uh, piece of brass without me flaring this case mount. The same with the 316. It won't even it won't push in won't push into there without me flaring this case mount first. So I'm going to have to do that, which means that I'm then going to have to crimp that case mount to get it to chamber back in the rifle, and we'll come across that at a later stage. So also with the Lee seating die, uh, the inside diameter of the seating die is not wide enough for it to allow to um, act as a, a mouth uh, crimper as well. This is due to the fact that it's only about uh, 316 diameter on the inside. So these 316 projectiles just fall through sometimes. That one's not falling right through. But the 323s, they'll definitely not go through. So which means we've got to come up with a different way of, of crimping that case mouth other than using the standard method of using the uh, seating die. So in order to get the uh, final round to actually chamber back in the rifle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually full length size the brass with the projectile in it once it's already been seated. And that's obviously not the normal practice you do. The way I'm going to do that is I've extended the uh, uh, the pin that knocks out the uh, primer right out further than you normally would, and I'm not going to push this shell all the way into the seating into the resizing die. I'm just going to do it enough just to knock out the primer. So put the shell in. And I only need to touch it just enough just to knock out the primer like that. Then you go on to cleaning the primer pocket and tidying up the mouth of the shell as normal. Like that. Ready to seat a new primer in. Next step is to put a new primer in. I just use a standard, oh, I've got a standard Hornady priming tool. Give it a good squeeze. You saw I had some problems with not seating these deep enough. That one seated quite nicely. Okay, now you're ready to put your powder charge in. Okay, so the next stage is uh, putting powder in each uh, of the brass once they've already been primed. And here I've got a, um, a powder thrower. Now I'm using 4.7 grains of this um, AP70N pistol powder the accuracy load for mine and I'm um, weighing each round because uh, each uh, powder charge um, because it's such a small amount um, to get it accurate I have to trickle each one 4.7 there okay the next stage is to flare the mouth so I take the flare mouth flaring die set already to the depth I need it and I'll just ever so slightly flare the mouth so that this 323 projectile just starts to go in there. Now I prefer the 323 projectile, well rather I should say my rifle prefers the 323 
over the 316. 316s are relatively accurate, but I'd probably get a flyer 1 in 10, so uh, my rifle prefers the uh, 323s. So the next step would be to seat the uh, projectile. So you obviously do this in batches, but then change over to the seating die. And you only need to push this down just enough to fit that, uh, that heel into the top of the case. So I'm only pushing it down ever so slightly. Just checking. That's right. Like that. Last stage will be to do a full length resize so that we crimp that case mount. So it will chamber in the, in the rifle. So lastly, I'm going to use the full length sizing die to actually crimp the case mouth. And what I've done is I've taken the depriming pin completely out of it. So I'll just use it as a through die. Put that in there. Obviously got to slightly lubricate the projectile and the case so that it goes into the die. It's probably way too much. I need a fine film on it the whole lot up in like that now you see with these 323s it does take a slight amount of the coating off but that doesn't matter it still shoots fine and it's still accurate so even though it's a little unorthodox of uh, the way that I reload for uh, the 310 cadet that's how I get around the um, idiosyncrasies of those lead eyes uh, and overcome the problem with the crimping, uh, the case crimping. There you have it.